Okay, we're going to paint that rowboat today. And um, we're going to start with the background, work from top to bottom on this painting. Um, what I like to do here is start with, um, I don't work wet into wet. These are washes that were quickly um, put in. There's some sap green, uh, yellow ochre with some burnt umber applied. Um, what I'm trying to do is just establish a big pattern. It looks like it's a fall day. And uh, so we see some reds mixing in with the greens. And right now, since there's so much paint um, on, on that area, the washes are sort of bleeding together. So um, this, is, this is what we want. Uh, we want to have this, uh, you know, those colors working together. Um, so here I'm accenting the uh, horizon line um, and the embankment uh, just to show the breakup of the water and the trees. And I will be infusing some of the same colors into the water wash here. Um, so I'm using the Arches 140 cold press paper. Uh, I really prefer that over any other paper for my students. Um, I just find it to be uh, very resilient. It's great paper. It's strong. It can take a beating. You can scratch it and, um, you're not going to, you're not going to ever paint, uh, uh, a hole through it like some of the uh, more inexpensive paper so uh, definitely arches 140 this pad I think is uh, 12 by 16 but they come in different sizes um, as far as the paints that I use uh, pretty much I have um, Windsor Newton professional quality I have uh, the Daniel Smith I have some Holbein paint. Um, they're all good. Try to stay away from, you know, the lesser stores, uh, you know, like, you know, the Michaels. Be careful. Um, their paints have a tendency to not have as much pigment. Um, now, getting back to the painting, we are adding some water. We're actually, we've been adding the water. Um, I'm starting now to link up the shadow shapes that we see in the in the photograph. Um, what I'll do is uh, I will you know send you guys the picture and uh, you'll be able to paint this um, at any time. You have the video. You can do this in your spare time. If you wanted to do a smaller one, you can too. So now I'm going back. I'm adding some more accents as I go. Um, when you paint, you know, you shouldn't just lock yourself into one area. We should always be moving around and making sure that our washes are coherent. Here I'm blow drying those areas because <clears throat> I think my next step is to put in some of the water. Um, notice my, that I use the back of my hand as a gauge to test to see how dry um, that paper is. Now what happens is with watercolor you do not want to put a wash over a damp paper. Um, the reason for that is you'll get these things called cabbages. Uh, it almost looks like a like a stain um, rather than a wash. So our previous uh, washes have to be almost bone dry and the way I do that is I find out that you know if it's warm to the touch it's dry. If it's cool it's not dry, so be careful. Um, you have to know that distinction, you know, before beforehand. Um, with watercolor, uh, you know, we do not have the uh, luxury of going back over. Uh, in watercolor, obviously, we work from light to dark, keeping the white of the paper as our lightest lights. So we want to make sure um, we keep that. Um, that going all the way through the painting. Um, there are some, you know, ideas on that where some people uh, in the watercolor world feel that, well, the watercolor should only be watercolor and there shouldn't be any other paint. And 
Um, no opaque watercolor should be used. No masking should be used. Well, I don't believe in that. I think uh, whatever you need to do to make a good watercolor painting, um, you should do. I don't think the, you know the person who's buying your picture. I don't think uh, that they're that's going to blow the deal. Oh, well, he used masking fluid. I don't think I'm going to buy the painting. No, that's not the way people think. So, but there are purists out there, and I, you know, God bless them. But um, I feel that uh, you can pretty much use whatever you need to use within within reason. I mean, you don't want to make your watercolor painting turn into a gouache painting. Gouache is just simply opaque uh, watercolor. So, um, now establishing the reds of the boat. Um, that first wash um, on the hull, the outer hull, it's pretty red. I mean, it's I think I used, uh, well, I did, I used uh, <laughs> cadmium red um, with a little bit of yellow in there because that boat had a little bit of a yellow tinge to it. Um, I think it was a little worn out. The, the inside of the hull was definitely um, a little lighter, uh, probably because of its worn out quality. Um, here I'm just painting on the surface. What I'll do too is I will interject some of the pictures back and forth. Um, you know, working them in uh, for longer stretches of time, if I can. Um, so, blow drying again. Um, I feel that sometimes you, you you have to dry the surfaces. All the information that we put down, um, we're going to have to accent anyway. So we want to work, you know, again, as if we're working on dry paper. We can actually get... Um, some nice uh, gradations and we can get some heavier washes and we don't have to worry about these subsequent washes um, bleeding into the first wash. That's why you'll see me blow drying um, the picture a lot. Um, <clears throat> you can just leave it. So let's say you, you don't want to blow dry it or you don't want to use electricity or you don't have a blow dry if you're outside or whatever doing plain air. You can go back and, and uh, just let it sit, and that'll be fine. Um, here, we're going back over, uh, let's see, reestablishing some of the areas in here, um, ac reaccenting some spots again, uh, blow drying again. Okay, so right now, basically, I'm going back and forth, accenting, putting shadow shapes in. Now I'm working on the seat of the um, of the boat, trying to get a nice um, feeling of depth. Now, now I'm going for the drawing. Uh, another thing on drawing, while I'm uh, discussing that, um, in this style of watercolor, you don't have to go really super detailed in your drawings. You don't have to have something that's you know an architectural rendering of everything. Um, you have to be accurate, um, but you don't have to be uh, super uh, precise where every line is, is counting. Uh, it's not really a drawing. It's more of a, an impression. So what we want to do is we want to we give the impression, but we don't want to like, illustrate. We don't want to over, uh, ex you know, over, overdraw on, on these things. But we do want to have good solidity too. So, um, and that's a fine line between going too detailed. Um, you want to try to get the big shapes in. You want to try to get like the shape of the boat here in this situation. You know, we, we needed to get that accurate. Um, you don't want that to look wonky at the end. So take your time, but don't, again, you're not doing an architectural rendering. Here I'm putting some, uh, you're probably wondering what that was. I'm just putting in some, uh, some details. Uh, basically, little, little flecks of paint that create some texture in the background. Um, now I'm working on some of the slats, just adding some. The brush I'm using here, I switched over to a rigger brush. Um, if you have a smaller brush, that's really all you need. Um, just something that'll get you know those little grooves and details in there. Um, okay, so working more on some of the detail. Um, 
Now there I sprayed a little bit of water in that area. Uh, the reason for that was I just wanted to get my uh, washes a little more um, dispersed. So what you do is it, you can actually spray okay, a dry wash and then work uh, your paint into that dry, into that wet wash after you spray it with a little water. Okay, you lose, use little atomizers. Um, anything that, that gives a fine spray is great. Okay, so more details to the boat. And um, as we're moving along, um, but what happens is that you know as as we work you have to kind of you have to you know as the artist you have to decide what you want to do there you go I that's the spray I was talking about I wanted to soften those reflections they were a little too hard by giving it a spray it diffused that area in the low, lower right hand corner of the painting okay adding more detail more uh, depth blow drying this layer and um, we're going to move all around. Again, you'll see my hand feeling it. There you go. It's dry. We're ready to paint some more. Okay. Um, now you'll also see me take the um, the paper towel. Uh, the reason for that is, you know, we want to. If let's say you you put down a, a wash or a, you're working in a little detail, you get this big blob of color, and it's way too dark or the wrong color just take your paper towel you know wad it up and just pat it a little bit and that will that'll pick up the wash it, um, and in some cases if you get it soon enough it'll just completely uh, absorb the whole stain wash okay so we're adding more detail around the dock um, what else are we here? We're going more towards. Okay, I think I go a little redder. Um, put some red wash into the reflection. Okay, cadmium red I use there. And basically, the colors are pretty simple. Um, I don't use any like crazy watercolor. I know watercolor has some really amazing colors and you know crazy names to the colors and. I try to keep things as simple as possible. Um, I use burnt umber, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, cadmium orange, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, raw sienna, if I didn't mention that before, um, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, um, and that's pretty much it. I try to keep things very simple. Um, so now I'm adding more detail to those weeds in the back and uh, let's see I think we're probably coming close to the end accenting that the um, the reflections in the water reestablishing that horizon line to make it nice and strong uh, you know in a good composition you want a nice strong horizontal here we have some really nice diagonals and there you go people there's the signature and taking the tape off is the unveiling okay well enjoy happy painting <laughs>